Live from the Washington, D.C. area, it's the Inside Scoop, all the news that our viewers want to know. Now, here's the host. Welcome to Inside Scoop. I'm Kimberly Costabile. And because May is National Historic Preservation Month, we're here tonight talking with Civil War reenactors, Fairfax historians, and junior historians from the American History Film Project. With me also tonight is Michael Chinworth of the Friends of Fairfax Station Railroad oh. Museum. So, and he'll be reviewing a railroad history film done by 17-year-old mm -hmm. Madison Kirkman from Ramona, California. Mm -hmm. We have Madison and his father, Woody Kirkman, here with us via telephone, chatting from California. Hello, Madison. Okay, we're going to connect with Madison in just a yeah. moment. Madison is a California entrant in the American History Film Project, which is a national exhibition of young filmmakers recording history. Madison's work will be exhibited May 21st at the historic Blenheim House in Fairfax. And I think we have an image of a brochure from the American History Film Project. We can show that. Madison, are you with us yet? Yes, I'm here. There oh, is. awesome. Good. Great. There All right. Um, so, Madison, what first got you involved with trains? Your film is on the preservation of a McKean car. Well, my dad kind of got me started into uh, uh, trains and railroading, and it just kind of continued from there. I uh, was handed down the uh, family train set and just kind of got interested in trains from there. Uh, and then I got into, interested in the McKean cars uh, in 2011 when I saw a picture of one in a book. Okay, and, um, and now what you've done is you've done a, a tremendous fundraising effort to bring a McKean car that had originally been in San Diego County, Cuyamaca to be exact, and you've brought it from Alaska back to San Diego County. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, it was started back in uh, September 2014. I was notified that I was allowed to have the car if I could ship it. And so I started the fundraising there and I started getting quotes and, and figuring out different ways that we could move the car from Anchorage, Alaska, all the way to San Diego, about 2,500 miles. And uh, as of, I think it was February, we finally had all the quotes worked out and we had all the fundraising complete. And we initiated the quotes and had the car moved down. Uh, the move started March 10th, March 10th and finished March 20th. Cool. Great, and, and you expect that this will be actually a, a project years in the making? Yeah, it'll take about, we're, we're estimating maybe 10 to 12 years uh, restoration time. Mm -hmm. That includes the motor trucks and the rear trucks that have to be completely built from scratch. Mm -hmm. And that'll also include the uh, interior and exterior restoration of the car body. Hmm. And uh, so uh, what we have here is we have a few photos to get the folks acquainted with Ramona, California. It's a city that, well, it's unincorporated about 35 miles from the city of San Diego, and it's in the mountain area of San Diego County. So it's retained a lot of its Wild West flavor, and your family's mostly responsible for preserving some of the history from the 1800s. So let's go ahead and, and roll some of the still photos we have of Ramona, California. Uh, there is a beautiful welcome to Ramona sign. And uh, it looks like, uh, for full disclosure here, I used to be a newspaper reporter in Ramona in the, in the early, late 1980s, early 1990s, in the previous century. And, um, and so this is a new Welcome to Ramona sign. I never saw that there before, but it looks like a, a, a beautiful piece of art. And you see the beautiful valley and mountains stretching behind it. And let's roll to the next picture. And this is a photo of the Old Town Hall. And, and again, Madison, you're part of a family of preservationists. Your father uh, began with the uh, Old Town Hall, and uh, your father's with us also. Woody, how are you doing? 
Doing good, Kim. Good, good. So you started on the Ramona Town Hall project back in what year? Well, in high school, long time ago. Okay. So <laughs> oh, over 30 years ago. Yeah. So Madison's following in your footsteps by taking on a large project while he's still 17. Well, he's got just about as big a project as uh, we have in the town hall on his own. That's right. Mm -hmm. Ah, and mm -hmm. and so uh, we're looking at a, a photo, a somewhat recent photo of the town hall. Now we're going to look at an old photo of the town hall, and we're seeing a photo that looks like it, it was dated 1912 or 1917, but it's it you see a uh, Ramona has pretty much uh, Main Street looks like a dirt road and looks like almost Civil War soldiers going through, so it might even be earlier, but... I but think that was uh, the photo you're looking at is probably from World War One. It was World War One, so it seems like it was a parade of historic soldiers, maybe? Because they had yeah, different, they were, different uniforms. They were on, on some sort of an exercise, a march uh, from from the back country, I think, back down to, uh, to San Diego. Yeah, so, so that one is... Uh, and then there's another photo coming up that's definitely 1912, because you see some Model Ts. And so you see a horse and carriage and some Model Ts in front of the town hall. And at that point, on one side, it's a state bank. On the other side, it's a real estate office. But uh, yep. you definitely see how the turn of the century was mm -hmm. with this combination of horses and Model Ts and, and on Main Street. Right. And the, the, the town hall served as the home for the uh, town's first library starting in 1894 when it was dedicated. And it was the library up to 1939. And then the bank uh, was uh, was um, uh, first brought in in 1911. It served uh, the town hall served as the home for the bank up into the 1920s. Yeah, and it's, so it's had many many different many different occasions there. Uh, and then let's flip to the next photo. And now we're looking at a photo from 1994. Blue skies over San Diego County, and it's just when you had finished the restoration. So. Um, the the brick is is nice and the windows are brand new and and you also had now what were the challenges you had to face you had to have it ada compliant but also earthquake compliant if you can explain well, yeah, a little bit. It, was a, it was a massive uh, that was a massive uh, first phase of the restoration project mm -hmm. and uh, uh, the first the front half of the building was seismically retrofitted to meet the earthquake codes now in place yeah. We're right now finishing up or, or working towards finishing the seismic retrofit in the main hall, but uh, but we also, of course, had to comply with historic codes as well as ADA. Yeah, and, and back then when I was a cub reporter in Ramona, the unenforced, the unreinforced masonry um, regulations there, a lot of buildings were lost due to that regulatory situation. It was It was meant to prevent uh, earthquake problems, but at the same time, those who could not afford to retrofit their buildings, the buildings were lost. So that's why the town hall is one of very few buildings uh, that are standing in, in San Diego County of that age. Well, uh, the, other thing, the other thing that's important about the Ramona Town Hall is that it's one of the last original town halls in the entire state of California. Uh, okay. um, even Julian up the road from us is on their third or fourth town hall. And uh, so it's, it's uh, you know, a very important part of the history of the area. Yeah, and, and, and you've had a lot of stops and starts along the way, so you've been a model of persistence. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, and, and now we're going to show a couple other photos very quickly of Ramona. Um, so, so you're from a long lineage of, of historians. So, and Madison can chime in here as well. Next photo uh, is, actually now this is a photo of Main Street in perhaps this year when the McKean car that Madison was uh, uh, responsible for bringing across. So the McKean car is passing the Ramona Theater. And the Ramona Theater is rather iconic as well. And, uh, and then you see the McKean car there. So, uh, Madison, how did you feel when you first saw the car coming through? Well, the car came through uh, over near Die Road, actually. And mm -hmm. when I first saw it, you know, it, it was the fourth and last McKean car that I hadn't seen. And, and it, it was quite a satisfying feeling being able to see it. And, and not only that, but also have the car. 
Yeah, and okay, and then there's, uh, let's go to one more slide there. There's a couple other slides. Nope, no more slides. All righty. Um, so we had a few uh, nice photos of your great, great grandfather's museum, so that would be the Guy Woodward Museum. So tell, tell us a little bit about that. I, either one of you can chime in. Well, the museum, I believe, started back in the 60s or so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, has been run mostly by our family. Uh, our, our late, or not late Uncle Ken, but our, our last year, just this year, and uh, the ah, museum, museum still exhibits uh, many historic artifacts from Ramona, including the Verlac House, uh, different uh, buildings that were from the area, uh, as well as wagons, uh, fire trucks, and uh, things of that nature, an old schoolhouse even, blacksmith shop, uh, honey house, all kinds of artifacts from the from Ramona and the back country. Okay, and so uh, what was nice about that is um, I had learned in the past what had happened is Guy Woodward grew up in Ramona, but he was in the um, law enforcement and I think, am I correct, Woody, he went into the FBI? But he ended up spending some time in Washington, D.C. Yeah, yeah, he was chief of police. Well, first a motorcycle cop back in the 1930s and became chief of police down in Oceanside, and then later went on to, uh, uh, to the FBI and also had some other, uh, other uh, law, law enforcement uh, background with um, all the, the racetrack, uh, you know, investigating uh, fraud at the racetracks and that in California. Mm -hmm. And great, and then so having had time in D.C., he decided to bring museums, the, the, the historic culture, back. And that's yep. when, after attending, seeing the Smithsonian and all that out here, he ended up <laughs> wanting to, cool. to be a preservationist over there. Yeah, he had, he had uh, collected artifacts, I think, pretty much his whole life. And when he retired, uh, he became uh, very involved with uh, the then new Ramona Pioneer Historical Society. Mm -hmm. And, of course, originally they had uh, uh, started the museum here in the town hall in the upstairs in the 1970s. And then in the 1980s, when the Verlac House had been donated to their group, they moved the museum uh, just down one block to the Verlac House. And Great. Verlac House was built about uh, oh, okay. 10 years before the town hall, actually. So it's one All of the right. older structures in Woody, town. Woody, we're, we're going to move to a break. And okay. I'll have a few more questions when we come right back. And Michael, is stay right here, and we'll talk a little bit more about Fairfax Station. I helped turn my child's public school into a whole new kind of school. One with a curriculum that really motivates kids. One that has extended hours six days a week, year-round, with loads of academic, cultural, and recreational activities. One that has support services, like medical and dental, right there. A school where parents' involvement is encouraged, where teachers have more time to teach, and students are excited about learning. There's just one problem. My child doesn't ever want to come home. You can help turn your school into a community school for excellence. Find out how. Call 1-877-LOVE-TO-LEARN. It's coming right to your neighborhood. And when it does, you may be surprised. It's your social security statement of your benefits, and it's going to help you plan your financial future. Your benefit statement will tell you how much social security you're eligible to receive, and when you'll get it. Then, you'll know how much you need to save for retirement, because that's coming too. The future is in your hands. Choose to save. The toxic fumes from this meth lab are seeping into Jamie's sinus cavity. Ammonia vapors invade her throat. Toxic gases fill her lungs. Jamie's body is deteriorating. And she doesn't even know it. Jamie, dinner. So, who has the drug problem now?
Find out how meth affects you at trickfree.org. We're back to the Inside Scoop. Here again, your host. And we're back. We are uh, introducing some folks from Rona, California to Fairfax yeah. Station. And there's a lot of things that you guys have in common. Not only are you train enthusiasts, mm -hmm. but being a smaller community mm -hmm. near a large city, you have, uh, you have your work cut out for you. Mm -hmm. right. So, Bill, how, or, or how, right. Michael, how would you uh, compare this? Well, yeah, you know, Madison's got some major challenges um, that I can appreciate. We, our biggest restoration project on site was a, a Norfolk Western caboose 20 years ago. And among the challenges was physically getting it in place, um, having, finding people who actually knew how to lay track uh, and how to restore just a, a, a shell of a caboose. Um, if Madison wants to uh, get a shell running as a full-scale locomotive again, it's, there's a lot of work in front of them. So, I, and I can appreciate the challenges uh, of that. So, yeah, and we've we've got a film. Uh, Madison first fell in love with the uh, when he when he saw a Nevada Railroad mm -hmm, Museum, right. and so we've got a, a, a roll of film of the uh, the, the McKean car mm -hmm. in Nevada. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. And actually, it was done by one of Madison's friends mm -hmm. when he was still in high school. Mm -hmm. And this good is work. done by Ryan. I'm not sure if there's sound on it. Yeah, you can hear a little bit of a train whistle in the beginning. I love the aesthetics of that film. Yeah. I, I thought I had, he had some, Ryan had some good yeah. angle shots. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so Ryan and Madison have become close friends. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. Ryan helped Madison. Madison directed and did the research for his film. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I believe that Ryan helped with some of the editing. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and pretty soon what we'll do is we're going to queue up uh, Madison's film, which would be next in a little bit. but. Um, 
before we do that, we have a Fairfax Station film yeah. queued up. Cool. And the Fairfax Station film, I think, is your review of everything you've done in 2015. Uh, not quite everything. We didn't have enough time to squeeze it all in. <laughs> but, uh, quite a bit, yes, yeah. Okay, good. And so let me know when, when that's ready. Yeah. But um, that's a little bit, so in a whole year, you've got everything from model railroad uh, mm -hmm. things to, um, well, tell me, you, you can. Uh, yeah, every, everything from model railroads to reenactments to um, major, well, for us, uh, major restoration projects. Uh, mm -hmm. We restored our uh, crossing gate, uh, replaced the railroad ties, um, and had good. smaller scale projects. Now. Okay, great. Yeah. yeah. Looks like um, Madison had a peek at that film earlier by looking at YouTube. So Madison, you can chime in, but uh, what do you think of the things that they're doing at Fairfax Station? Yeah, pretty interesting. I, I liked uh, definitely the use of the drone footage that they, they had access to. Yeah. And I liked uh, how they kind of laid out a calendar almost of the different things that they did this, you know, the past, yeah. past year. Yes, and, and then, then they talked about the book signing, and there's a, a book signing of A Christmas Flight, and it's actually a book that's written by Mary Buckingham Lipsy, and we'll be seeing Mary in the next segment. Mm -hmm. So Mary had done some extensive research on Civil War graves, and I mm -hmm. attended her talk last mm -hmm. week right. at your museum. Yeah. So cool. we're really excited about this. Um, we'll show, uh, if we can cue up Madison's film in a little bit, but we'll, we'll actually cue that up in the next segment and uh, give Mary some time to talk about that. But of all the things that you've done this year, what, is, what stands out as the biggest challenge for Fairfax Station? Uh, well, it's hard to say. The, um, from a, keeping it up, I mean, keeping the tempo up. Uh, as a small uh, museum, it's always a challenge to keep yourself out in front of the public. Um, People do forget. I mean, we are literally off the beaten track, um, off the main road. So, it, you know, keeping in the face of everyone to remind everyone that we're still here and that we're doing these things to uh, bring in our audiences uh, to preserve history, it's always a challenge. Yeah. 
that's part of the challenge. It, that's an enjoyable challenge, but uh, it's it's a continuous one. Yeah. And uh, what now? You said that you admired the fact that Madison got involved at the age of seventeen. You'd know, like yeah. to see younger people get yeah. involved in in your group. So, mm -hmm. right. uh, Madison, what do you think are key ways to get young people involved in history? How in mm. what what attracted you? Well, I would think one of the most interesting things, or the one thing that everyone dreams about when when they're a kid and they're seeing the trains go by the tracks and. You know, and the one thing that everyone wants to do is have their hand at the throttle driving the thing. So, you know, it, it's if if that's at all possible, you know, get people in the train, let them ride it, let mm -hmm. them see what it feels like, and, and let them have that, that experience because that'll definitely stay with them for for quite a while. Mm -hmm. And you were saying that uh, I heard in a radio interview the first time you had your hand on the throttle of that train in in Nevada, yeah. that's when you were hooked. So tell me a little bit more about that. Yeah, well, I, I got to ride the McKean car. I think I've ridden it three or four or maybe five times now. Um, the first time was back in uh, 2012, and uh, it was the first time I had ever seen a McKean car in person and got to ride it. And, you know, they only go 15 miles an hour up there because they're running historic equipment. But, you know, even at that speed, just hearing their engine run and, and hearing the, the clickety-clack of the tracks and, and all that, you know, it was just pretty fun. And, and then you decided to start a GoFundMe. And so how is it fundraising at your age? So fundraising, I'm, usually I use Facebook. GoFundMe is my primary way to donate, but I use Facebook as a site to promote it. And that's okay. what I'm doing. And we'll, and we'll, we'll be taking yet another break. And right after the break, Madison, we're going to watch your film, but we'll have some Fairfax historians here to review your film and give you a little bit of a critique. But uh, I'm excited to talk to you more about your film. And, and we'll connect you with the Fairfax Station folks later. Some dreams are universal. Dreams that inspire us. Multiple sclerosis is a devastating disease that changes lives forever. The National MS Society does more for people with MS than any organization in the world. But we can't do it alone. To get involved, visit us online at nationalmssociety.org or call 1-800-FIGHT-MS. This is why we're here. Because nobody dreams of having multiple sclerosis. What's wrong with this picture? Half of young Americans can't locate economic powers like Japan and India. 20% can't even find the Pacific Ocean. Without geography, our children aren't ready for the world. Geography is everywhere. It's incredible creatures. Rhythm. Fashion. Flavor. It's economics and politics. It's change. Understanding connections between people and places is critical in the 21st century. That's why we created MyWonderfulWorld.org. Go there now for your free parent and teacher action kits and give our kids the power of global knowledge. Because kids who understand our world today can succeed in it tomorrow. We're back to the Inside Scoop. Here again, your host. Welcome back. We are here with with Susan Gray, uh, the curator for the City of Fairfax Museums. And, and also, as we talked about before, we've got Mary Lipsy, who uh, is, is quite an accomplished <laughs> historian. She's written a book on the Christmas flight, but also did a great deal of research on the Civil War uh, graves in Fairfax County. So, um, and you're also on the Fairfax County History Commission. History Commission. Right. So, and then you also do some work with um, the Smithsonian too? I volunteer at the Smithsonian and National Archives. 
Yes, yes. So, so we've got quite an esteemed panel here. And hopefully we'll be gathered again at the American History Film Project May 21st, which is being um, hosted uh, in the, the, the Blenheim House, which is a property of the city of Fairfax. Exactly. So, yes, and so, um, so Susan, uh, what we're, we're about to do is Susan was generous in offering her facilities to host the Film Fest, and that's after uh, next weekend, which is the big Civil War uh, event. And so uh, folks have a last-minute chance to film Civil War uh, enactors, reenactors, but what's, what's, there's a big schedule of events coming for this coming weekend. Tell us what's happening. Oh, thank you, Kim. Yes, we have a full schedule of events from mm -hmm. 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., mm -hmm. and many of our living history presentations will be continuing throughout the day. So visitors will have the chance to meet uh, some old favorites, mm -hmm. uh, Claire Barton, for example, uh, General Robert E. Lee, mm -hmm. and then we're very excited to have some new participants uh, this year, including uh, Tom Melville, who's going to uh, instruct everybody on how to play cricket as it was played during the Civil War. Mm -hmm. And we're also very fortunate to have a number of African-American groups with us this year, including representatives from the 54th Massachusetts and other representatives from the United States Colored Troops. So there will be war reenactors and, and as and well how as, in the as home civilian, and, and yes. Civilians. And we'll also be looking at medical care. Mm -hmm. uh, during the Civil War, we have reenactors, living history, presenters coming who will uh, portray uh, Union surgeon Hovey and his wife Marilla, who served as his nurse. And that presentation will take place in the historic Blenheim House. Oh, is there is there what certain time if someone favors the war reenactments should they come at a certain time or would or, or, or is it best to come at ten and stay all day or what well yes say? we would love to have everybody <laughs> come at ten and <laughs> stay until five mm -hmm. but it's most free. a lot of the presentations will be ongoing throughout mm -hmm. the day mm -hmm. and then other things such as the firings uh, beginners boot camp and the Civil War music, that's going to be at three or four different times during the day. So, uh, mm -hmm. for example, if you come at 10, you'll be able to hear music right away and then shortly followed by cannon firing. And then uh, one of our four uh, talks will also take place early in the day. Mm, good, good. And there'll be an opportunity if, if someone shoots with their camera, they can post it on Twitter and get it to the museum and get it to the American History Film Project. Absolutely. Fun. We love so, for visitors to also film to during film. the day. And yeah, that's wonderful. And so, so while we've got you here, a little bit of a preview of, of the Film Fest that'll be May 21st is we'll, we'll let you preview um, the uh, film from California now, so they'll they'll cue it up in a little bit. But we're going to show you Madison's film okay. and the restoration project. And again, this is unique because, as a 17-year-old, he took this on and he made some calls and said, "What would it take to bring the remains of this McKean car mm -hmm. down?" Mm -hmm. And she said, "Well, if you can cart it, if you can transport it, you can have it." So, uh, so let's go ahead and roll the film. In 1904, over a friendly dinner in New York, E. H. Herman, CEO of the Union Pacific Railroad, and William Riley McKean, Jr., head of motive power for the Union Pacific, composed the idea of the self-propelled passenger car by using a gasoline-powered engine first used in speedboats with the luxury of Pullman Palace cars and the safety and strength of rail cars not yet seen in mass production. The idea resulted in the McKean Motor Car Company and Union Pacific Motor Car No. 1, the archetype for generations of cars that would follow. The evolution of the next five motor cars would present the necessary fixes needed to the engines, drive systems, and car bodies. This would lead the way to the seventh McKean Motor Car, which was the first to sport one of the most prominent features of the cars built after 1907, the large porthole windows which allowed a better field of view by hinging the 24-inch circular glass into the car. This car also featured a truss-like structure within the body, thus creating a very rigid and versatile framework, the likes that had not been seen previously. In 1907, an advertisement for the new McKean cars caught the eye of E.A. Hornbeck, general manager for two short-line railroads in San Diego, 
He advised both the Los Angeles and San Diego Beach Railway to buy two McKean cars and the San Diego, Cuyamaca and Eastern Railway to buy one McKean car. Each car cost roughly $20,000, the equivalent to $500,000 today. The car for the sdc &E was built with the markings Cuyamaca Motor Car in gold and was painted in rich burgundy. The interior was finished with a dark mahogany veneer, green imitation leather bench seats, and had a ceiling with hand-painted accents. The car could hold 75 passengers in both the men's and family sections, the men's section being for smokers. The car also had a restroom and drinking fountain for passengers, and the car was lit at night with brass acetylene lamps manufactured by Adams & Westlake Company. The car traveled from Omaha to San Diego under its own power and arrived having broken the record for fastest travel between Salt Lake City and San Diego. The car arrived in San Diego on March 19, 1908 at 12.40 p.m. The car's fresh paint glistened in the sunlight and polished brass shined for the occasion. She would start her regular service on the line running between San Diego at the C Street Station and Foster, a now defunct town where Lake San Vicente and Dam is today. The car would run a few times a day and was often pulled out of service as the drive mechanism would break in one way or another. By 1913, the car was seldom used, and in 1914, the Yuma Valley Railroad, part of the U.S. Reclamation District, bought the car for $6,000. It arrived in Yuma, Arizona on November 14, 1914. The car was renumbered YV-1 and used as transport for men up into the valley. The car was also used for limited revenue service for the public. In 1916, the valley and railroad suffered damage from another flood of the Gia River, which kept the McKean car out of service until the tracks could be repaired. While it was out of service, baggage doors were added. By 1925, the Yuma Valley Railroad had little use for the car, and while the Department of the Interior was forming the Alaska Railroad, they needed equipment. They sent letters around to other government railways and soon bought the McKean car for an unknown amount. In April of 1926, the car was sent from Yuma to Alaska by way of the Southern Pacific Railroad. The car would run another year before having its first major overhaul. In 1927, the Alaska Railroad removed the original engine and trucks from the car and replaced them with two 104 horsepower engines, one per truck. At this time, the pointed knife edge nose was also cut off and replaced with a new rounded end to allow doorways at each end of the car. The car was now marked for the Alaska Railroad number 108, along with Department of the Interior near the cab. In 1935, the replacement engines were removed from the trucks and the car markings were changed to Alaska Railroad number 83 to signify that it was now an unpowered baggage passenger car or combination car. In World War II, the car was used on the 714th Railway Battalion for troop transport. In the late 1940s, the car was likely pulled off the rails and used for storage for quite a few years. It changed hands many times, eventually leading its way to the group Anchorage Historical Properties Incorporated. This is where I fit into the story. I had been in contact with the group in Alaska to get more information on the car, and in one email I said that if they ever wanted or needed to get rid of the car, I would be interested. In September of 2014, I got an email from the president of the AAHP that said that if I could pay for the movement of the car from Anchorage, Alaska to San Diego, that I could have it. As a side note, I was only 15 years old at the time. It took some time and lots of fundraising, but eventually, after a year and a few months, I had all of the shipping arrangements planned out, and on March 10th, the car was lifted off of its spot in Anchorage and lowered onto a trailer. On March 20th, the car made it by truck to Ramona, California, and that night we lifted her off of the trailer, finishing one chapter and starting the next, a complete historic restoration to fully operable condition. While the Cuyamaca is very important to San Diego's history, being the last surviving car from the San Diego, Cuyamaca, and Eastern Railway, the car has additional importance as it is the oldest of the three McKean cars still in existence, and in fact may be the oldest all-steel passenger car and oldest aerodynamic land vehicle in the world. This is where you come into the equation. We need your help to restore the McKean car Cuyamaca to her former glory. With your donations of time, money, or even both, 
we can accomplish a complete restoration of the Queen Macca McKean car to her 1908 splendor and iconic status of American ingenuity. We encourage you to visit our various online resources, including our main website, www.mckeencar.com, our Facebook page, the McKean Motor Car Company Historical Society, the MMCCHS, and our GoFundMe page at www.gofundme.com backslash McKean Car Cuyamaca. So you'll be able to see the film in its entirety uh, May 21st, but that's most of it, the gist of it. So what do you think about this project? Well, I would say congratulations, uh, Madison, for uh, recording and saving and future restoration of this wonderful part of the history. And we certainly look forward to seeing the entire film on May 21st along with the other student entries. Yes. Thank you. And what, did you, and what did you think of that as a film? Well, it's a wonderful experience to uh, make history come alive, which is really important, rather than just reading about it in textbooks, but to uh, you know, have the opportunity to see an object from history and see it go through restoration, et cetera. And uh, yeah, and, and so this is, is quite, so we'll be hearing from Madison about the, the extent, when he's interviewed on May 21st, mm -hmm. he'll talk, talk a little bit more about the challenges he faces to, to put this project across. But as a film, you see that he took still photography and he, he, he and Ryan probably chose the music. And, and do you think that it was done in an engaging way? Would you display that in your museum if you saw it? Yeah, or? Certainly, we have yeah. uh, three screens in Fairfax Museum where we have presentations, yes. So. Uh -huh. And it's, it's always fun. So, so Madison, we invite you to come and shoot some Fairfax history, too. Um, we'll, we're going to take another break, and with, through the magic of video, we'll be visiting with, we'll be time traveling with a reenactor. And we're going to see Mary again. She's going to come back and talk about some war graves in a couple weeks. Osama bin Laden calls getting nuclear weapons a religious duty. Today, materials that can be used to make nuclear weapons are stored in more than 40 countries. Sometimes protected by just a chain link fence. Yet not enough is being done to lock down these materials before terrorists steal them. Why did we learn all this? My mother. My son. My sister-in-law. Were all murdered September 11th. Help protect America. Together we can. Please join us. The stem cell issue is being debated throughout the country. Truth is, most everyone has an opinion, even if they don't know the facts. Let's stop arguing and start really understanding the potential of stem cell research. For us and for millions of Americans living with disabilities, get the facts. Call 1-877-842-3442 for free information from the Stem Cell Research Foundation. That's 1-877-842-3442. Following the tragic events of September 11th, there have been hundreds of violent attacks against innocent Americans. Remember what that flag you're waving stands for. Remember, please stop the hate. We're stronger when we are united. Remember, remember what that flag you're waving stands for. One nation under God. Indivisible. With liberty. And justice. For all. In America, there's either room for everyone or it's not America. Don't pick the wrong fight. Let's keep America land of the free. Stop the hate. Planning a home renovation? Put this at the top of your to-do list. Because after 10 years, none of you are protected against tetanus and another potentially fatal disease, diphtheria. A minor injury, such as a cut or a scrape, can put you at risk for a tetanus infection. And while safety gear offers some protection, an up-to-date vaccination called the TD Booster is the best insurance against tetanus. So get the TD Booster. If it's been 10, do it again. We're back to the Inside Scoop. Here again, your host. And we're back. And uh, we invested in some new equipment here at Fairfax Public Access. And we actually have a time machine that, uh, in addition to all of our cameras here. So through the magic of a time machine, we have uh, Mary Wilcoxon. Is that the correct name? Or, or what was Yes. Okay. And so, and, and so uh, Mary had to disappear from the Blenheim House, which is, is it's the house, the historic house where all the activities are hap happening this weekend. But Mary had to, her family had to evacuate 
Uh, let me, Civil can, War can I tell you just a little bit about yes. what happened here? Yes. I, I have to tell you, you know, I'm a lady. Mm -hmm. And ladies have beautiful homes. We had just put together this beautiful home, and we were waiting to really be able to enjoy it. Mm. And what happens? We have that horrible event. Mm. Now, some people call it the Civil War. I don't like to call it that. I like to call it the War of Great Unpleasantness. Ah. <clears throat> That's mm. much better. Mm -hmm. Or the Northern Aggression. Mm -hmm even better, mm. or even the Southern opportunity to have independence. But I have to, I digress a little bit because mm -hmm. I want you to know that we were living there, we were loving our home, we were having a wonderful time. I have two little children at the time. Mm -hmm. um, I had a little Bessie and little Harry, and oh, they were just delightful. One was walking, one was dawdling around. We have soldiers come into uh, our backyard. Mm. Now, before, it used to be just hay, it used to be oats growing, it used to be we had, you know, we were quite wealthy. <laughs> we did have four horses. We did mm. have uh, cattle. We did have other important items. We did have some enslaved people that are living with us and helping with us. But indeed, what happens to us? We get invaded by these soldiers. When that president, Abraham Lincoln, he asked for 75,000 troops to come down to Washington, D.C. We are only 15 miles in Fairfax City from Washington, D.C. Mm. And while we're doing that, what happens? Mm. They all come and camp out by us. When they go and they fight in July of 1861, mm. guess where they go? They go beyond our house, but of course they go through our fields, they eat our produce, they take our things, and then coming back, what do they do? They ransack our house. When you were gone. Mm. Well, you know, I actually, mm. we were trying to be safe Mm -hmm. I have little children. We can't have all that activity going on. Mm -hmm. They went in, they broke the windows, they pulled even the hinges off the doors. So you had escaped a family's, a family's house or, or relatives? Our house. In no, this is our house. Okay. Our house at Blenheim, right there at Fairfax City. Mm -hmm. It was our house. And we had moved, of course, when all these soldiers were around, we moved out of the house just mm -hmm. to make sure. But then when we come back in, mm -hmm. everything mm -hmm. is destroyed. Well, Mary, I have to, I'm sorry, pardon me, Mrs. Wilcoxon, I don't yes. mean to be so informal, I apologize. Mm -hmm. But I have to tell you, I work at your house now. In the present day, I work at your house. <laughs> I, I know, I'm, I'm not properly covered. I do apologize. Uh, but I work at your house, and we show your house to visitors. What do you say? We talk about your family and Good. the trials and tribulations that you went through and other people living in the community near Fairfax Courthouse. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We talk about your enslaved people. Mm -hmm. and the trials and tribulations that they had. It was a very difficult system for them. Would you like to see some photos of how your, your house looks in the year 2016? Can I do that? Yes, but I have to have, also have to say we talk about the soldiers. Oh. Do you remember what they did to the walls of your house? Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Oh, yeah, they, yeah. They, what they did is when they you put graffiti mm -hmm. when we came back it was horrible. It was horrible. Now, we actually left. We stayed for a little while, and then we left. Mm. And that was when the soldiers came in. They did. They came in uh, at three different times. The Union soldiers came in. And well, the house was so new, Mrs. Wilcoxon, and you had not even painted the walls. And I think some jokesters of these soldiers, they decided to leave their mark. But part of it was they wanted to be remembered. They were young boys. 
They weren't as young as your children, as we your Harry, but you had. We had plans for those walls. But afterwards, we did. you painted. We did. And mm -hmm. that was wonderful. You could paint and wallpaper. Yes. But I heard the names remained in the attic. And you yes, can still you never, see the names your in the family, attic. Your family, you know, your, um, your great, great granddaughter, she preserved the house. She made sure that it was safe. None of your other family members ever covered the names up in the attic. Why not? We covered them downstairs. Well, I think because they had to get, you had to get, you know, you got your farm back together, just living your life. But I think suddenly, at some point, one of your family members said, we have history in these names. Mm, I know all about history. You know, we're related to uh, a family member of the Ball family. Uh, my maiden name was Estridge. And uh, mm. my third great-grandfather was George Estridge, who was the ward, well, excuse me, he was in charge of a ward named Mary Ball, who mm. later married a man by the name of Lawrence Washington. And she named her first son George Washington oh. after my ancestor. Yes, after you have ancestor. very long lineage in And that's in these very lines. important. Well, one thing, oh, mm -hmm. I wish you could come back next Saturday, mm -hmm. because next Saturday on April 30th, we're having a Civil War Day. I know that must seem odd. I know that must seem odd, because we will have soldiers. Are you sure you can't do the War of Great Unpleasantness instead? Well, all right. Just, all right. just generally, Change it's called Civil War. <laughs> <laughs> right. And so people will be coming. We had over a thousand visitors last year. Oh, on my site. On your site. And they come to find out about you. They come to find out about the soldiers and the enslaved people. But there are soldiers from both the Union and the Confederate who will be there. So many wonderful things. And in our special uh, interpretive center, mm -hmm. we have talks going on there. And though it doesn't have to do with the Civil War, on May 21st, we're having wonderful footage, film, oh, photographs that are put together one after another and they move. And we're having yeah. young historians who will be showing their films as part of the American, uh, American uh, Film History Project. And they'll be shown on May 21st in that building. So we. You lost me. At I moment. know. Do you, do you see that black box right there? And it has, uh -huh. has like glowing eyes on it, red eyes. Is it going to move? It's not a camera. I don't want it moving. I, I, yeah, so, so that, that's, that's, that's a fine. camera. That's a type of camera. But okay. it's not the kind of camera where you have to stay still for five minutes. It's, it's, you can move, and it'll move with you. And it creates Is it moving as we're yeah, it's, talking? Yeah, it's moving as we're talking, and it's capturing us moving. Mrs. Wilcoxon, mm -hmm. if, you have, if you have a question to ask mm -hmm. of people from this modern time, or something you would like to tell them, what would you want them to know about or remember about the struggle you had during the Civil War? Remember that people suffered on both sides. Mm. And certainly, I was a product of the country and the world that I came from. I loved Virginia, and I loved what it represented. And I think it's important for them to understand that we were all Americans, and we all were trying to make a difference in this world mm -hmm. in our own way. Mm -hmm. in our own time. And each generation is going to have to do that. Mm -hmm. I don't know what this next generation is going to have to do, but they're going to have to step forward, and they're going to have to decide what it is about America they love, what is it about America that makes America a place to be and to love and to wish for yeah. in this great, great country. I think the hard part of the Civil War is that each side, they were defending their values, and they each, and they each had strong values. 
-hmm. So that's what makes it tough. You have to decide what your values are and draw a line in the sand and, st and stick to your guns. And right. that sand was drawn in Fairfax City. Mm -hmm. Well, in, in Fairfax, in Fairfax Courthouse. Courthouse, it was really, um, there were a lot of people who had come into the area from the north back in the 1840s. Mm -hmm. They came mm -hmm. because land was cheap. They had to make a decision when the war began, and it was Confederate-held territory. Do they stay mm -hmm. oh, do or do they, they leave? leave? And when the Confederates pulled out, people like your family and others had to decide what to do as well. Yes. And I think it's hard to understand what devastation is really like mm -hmm. unless you saw something like that. And now we can break character a little bit. So Mary is actually uh, uh, the president mm -hmm. of the, the city of Fairfax, old courthouse. The uh, friends of the historic, friends of the historic, friends of the historic <laughs> Fairfax Paris courthouse. Courthouse. <laughs> courthouse. Yes. <laughs> yes. And and your real name is Janae Lindner. Janae. And so, <laughs> so, and so Janae. And so so Janae, what are, what are the most interesting things you see on a walking tour? Because you lead the walking tours okay. about the teenagers. I also am mm -hmm. on associated with Blenheim. I'm also on the historic Fairfax City Inc. board. And I think they're going to put up the websites for those, but if you'd like to go on a walking tour, we'd mm -hmm. love to have you learn more about Fairfax City. Um, mm -hmm. They're the first Saturday of the month, and they'll be going starting next month through October. Mm -hmm. And uh, they'll start at 10 o'clock. And please go to that site. And we'll talk with Andrea a little bit more later. She has so much information to give us about the actual house itself. And so you'll come back a little bit after some All more right. days and show us how things have changed and just show us everything. But we'll, we'll be delighted to see you this coming weekend and give us an update. Thank you. Thanks for joining Thank us. Thank you. <laughs>